Hi, everyone. My name is Zhi Hao, and today I'm super excited to present Pat, a tensor program optimizer with partial equivalent transformations and automated corrections. And this is a joint work with colleagues from Tsinghua, Carnegie Mellon, and Facebook. Tensor, uh, machine learning computation is typically defined as tensor programs represented in graph structures. Each node uh, denotes a linear algebra operator, such as convolution or a nonlinear activation function, such as ReLU, and each edge is, is a tensor shared between operators. And to optimize the performance of a trans, uh, tensor program, existing frameworks use program transformations to iteratively optimize the graph structure of an input program to obtain an optimized program. But um, current systems consider only fully equivalent transformations. The left figure shows an example. In a fully equivalent transformation, the two programs always produce the exact same results for arbitrary output positions. An advantage of fully equivalent transformation is preserving functionality. And we don't need to worry about model, potential model accuracy loss uh, when applying these transformations. On the other hand, a drawback is that we will miss some optimization opportunities where fully equivalent, um, fully equivalent is not preserved and only achieve suboptimal performance. Well, on the other hand, the tensor program optimization space contains a spectrum of partially equivalent transformations where the two programs may produce different results for some output positions. And partially equivalent transformations may lead to better runtime performance by using faster ML operators, more efficient tensor layouts, and other hardware uh, optimizations. But these, transforma uh, these transformations may change the functionality of a network and the result in potential model accuracy loss. And this is also why existing DN systems consider only fully equivalent transformations. And, and one question we try to address in this work is, is it possible to achieve the benefits of both worlds? Is it possible to exploit partially equivalent transformations to improve runtime performance while still preserving end-to-end -end equivalence? So this idea may seem counterintuitive, but uh, let me sh first show you a motivating example. The left figure shows an input program with a standard convolution operator. And uh, the right graph shows a possible equivalent transformation, a possible partially equivalent transformation, where um, we can first concatenate two images into a larger image along the width dimension by reshaping and trans transposing the input tensor shape. Next, we can perform a convolution operator on the larger image, and finally split the larger image back to two separate images by performing another reshape and transpose operator. And this transformation improved the performance of convolution by running convolution on the larger image with more parallelization opportunities. But it also changed the semantic uh, computation of pixels along the boundary of the two images and produce incorrect results, shown as the red shadow boxes um, in, the, in the graph. So to fix the incorrect results, we can apply a correction operator afterwards on the incorrect pixels to recover end-to-end uh, -end equivalence. And this transformation, together with the correction, leads to 1.2 times speed up for ResNet 18, which is a common uh, computer vision model. And the correction preserve end-to-end -end equivalence and guarantee no model accuracy loss. So how can we take advantage of this partially equivalent transformation? And in order to do so, we built PAT, the first tensor program optimizer with partially equivalent transformations. And PAT enables a much larger optimization space for tensor programs by combining fully and partially equivalent transformations. And by exploring this much larger optimization space, PAT achieves better, uh, better performance by outperforming existing optimizers by up to 2.5 times. And in addition, PAT guarantees correctness by automatically generating correction kernels to preserve end-to-end -end equivalence. And this figure shows an overview of PAT. By accepting uh, a tensor program as an input, first, the mutation generator uh, try to generate possible mutants of the input program by considering both fully and partially equivalent transformations. And the generated mutant programs are sent to the mutant corrector, which automatically corrects the incorrect, um, the incorrect outputs of these mutants 
and produces corrected uh, mutants. And finally, the corrected mutants are used by the program optimizer to construct an optimized program. And in order to use this approach, we must address two key challenges. First, how can we automatically generate these partially equivalent transformations? And second, how can we correct them? And PAT uses two key techniques to address these challenges. First, we use superoptimization techniques to generate partially equivalent transformations. And second, use multilinearity of deep learning computations to correct um, the results. And I'll explain the meaning of these terms in the next couple of slides. OK, first, let's try to generate these uh, potential mutants. And the mutant generator uses the superoptimization idea adopted from our earlier work, TASO. It accepts a subprogram of the input and tries to generate potential mutants. It uses the operators supported by the hardware backends as basic building blocks and enumerate all possible programs up to a fixed size by using these, uh, these available operators. And next, all programs with the same input output shapes are the original, and uh, as the original subprogram become uh, potential mutants. And each mutant can replace the original subprogram and become a partially equivalent transformation. And note that our mutant generator discovers both fully and partially equivalent transformations. And next, we need to examine the generated mutants or transformations and fix the incorrect results. And there are two, key challenge, uh, two challenges we need to address when examining a transformation. First, which part of the computation in our transformation is not equivalent? And second, how can we correct um, the results? And to help understand um, the, the challenges, we first consider a Stroman approach. And to examine whether two programs, uh, F and G, are equivalent in the first step, we can explicitly consider all output positions. And for each output position P, we examine all possible inputs. And this requires O, M times N uh, examinations, where M and N are the number of output positions and the number of possible inputs. But both of them are too large to explicitly enumerate. And in order to reduce the examination complexity, PAT leverages uh, the specific property of, of deep learning called multilinearity. And we say a program F is multilinear, or is a multilinear tensor program, or MLTP, if the output is linear to all inputs. And today's uh, deep learning computation consists of multilinear tensor programs and nonlinear activations. And multilinear tensor programs consume the vast majority of the overall computation time. And by exploiting um, the multilinearity of tensor programs, PAT can reduce the examination complexity from O m times n in the Strawman approach to a small constant number of examinations. And in order to make this, uh, to make this possible, PAT leverages two uh, theorems. And the takeaway of the first theorem is that we don't need to enumerate all uh, output positions. We can group output positions with an identical summation interval into a region. And, and more specifically, when expressing a tensor program in its Einstein, uh, Einstein notation, the summation interval is simply the lower and upper bounds of all looping variables. And um, so in this uh, figure, all output positions in the orange box have the same as summation interval and therefore are grouped in a single region. And while we are interested in the summation interval and regions, and the reason is because for two multilinear tensor programs, um, F and G, if they are equivalent, for a constant number of uh, positions in a region, then they are equivalent for all positions in that region. And using these theorems, we only need to examine O1 positions in each region. And this greatly reduces the complexity from OM times N to OM. However, the task of just examining uh, equivalence for even a single position is still challenging because we need to test whether F and G give us the same results for arbitrary inputs. And this task can be very expensive. And to further reduce the, the examination complexity, the takeaway of our second theorem is that we don't need to explicitly consider all possible inputs. And, and more specifically, if F and G 
um, are not equivalent for all inputs, and there exist some counterexamples, then the probability that uh, the two programs give us identical results on t random or uh, integer inputs is at most uh, one over two to the power of 31 to the power of t, which can be an um, arbitrarily small constant number. And therefore, we can just run t random test for each uh, output position. And t is a hyperparameter controlled by users to, to balance the examination complexity and the error probability. And this reduces the overall examination complexity to O1. And the proof details of the, of the two theorems are available in the paper. OK, and um, the two theorems allow Pat to immediately identify incorrect results of our transformations. Then we designed the mutation corrector to quickly and eff efficiently correct the outputs of a mutant program. And the corrector um, has two steps. In the first step, the, uh, the corrector simply recomputes the incorrect output positions using the original program. And the correction kernels are shown in, in the yellow box. This guarantees that the final program is functional equivalent uh, to the original program, but this approach may introduce non-trivial overhead. And second, to minimize the, the correction cost, Pat optimistically fuses correction kernels with other DNA operators whenever possible. And we have discovered many kernel fusion opportunities for the correction kernels. And for our mot motivating example, because the convolution in the correction kernel shares the, uh, the same weights as a regular convolution operator, and therefore Pat can directly fuse the two operators uh, into a single convolution to reduce the kernel launch overhead. And in our evaluation, correction introduces less than 1% overhead. Okay, the last component in our design is the uh, program optimizer for optimizing an arbitrary input program. We use a search-based optimizer that iteratively sends um, some multilinear uh, tensor subprograms to the mutant generator and corrector, which automatically generates potential mutants and their corrections and sends the corrected mutants back to the program optimizer. And um, the optimizer uses beam search to explore candidates in the search space. Optimizing a deep learning architecture from scratch takes less than 30 minutes. Uh, we think this is acceptable because uh, we only need to optimize each model once before deployment. And the program optimizer also includes other optimizations, such as operator fusion, constant folding, and redundancy elimination. OK, and we have compared PATH with existing tensor program optimizers with fully equivalent transformations. And this paper compares PATH with TensorFlow, TensorRT, and TASO on NVIDIA via Henry GPU. And the takeaway is that PATH can constantly outperform existing program uh, optimizers by up to 2.5 times. And the speed up is achieved by combining fully and partially equivalent transformations. OK, and uh, our paper includes a comprehensive uh, evaluation of PAT. In addition to the end-to-end -end evaluation, we, ha we have also conducted a case study on the tensor, operator, and graph level optimizations discovered by PAT. And second, we show that both fully and partially equivalent transformations are critical to performance. And third, we observed that PAT can consistently outperform existing optimizers on a variety of backends, including CUDA libraries, TVM, and ANSWER. And finally, we show that the partially equivalent transformations and corrections discovered by PAT can directly benefit existing optimizers by adding these transformations and their corrections in existing systems. And to, to summarize, PAT is a tensor program optimizer with partially equivalent transformations and automated corrections, enabling larger optimization space, better runtime performance, and stronger correctness guarantee. All source code of PAT is publicly available online. And with that, I would like to conclude my talk, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for listening.